Hey guys, and that here, this is going to be my chapter review to Nanatsu no Taizai or The Seven Deadly Sins 318. Now, uh, the chapter was called Chaotic Battle, and it, was, it, wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't a particularly great chapter. Um, I mean, it, it was everything I expected. Uh, if, if you'd seen my previous reviews, everything that happened in this chapter was pretty much all I could think was going to happen this chapter but after watching Grieber's review so go check out Grieber because you'll see you'll hear a lot of points uh, in mine might reflect his I'm gonna admit some uh, I'm gonna omit some points just because I've watched his review before doing my review so I feel like there'll be a lot of influencing uh, there'll be a lot of an influencing force from his review into my review uh, but I think I think for the most part Apart from the fact that <laughs> he strongly believes this was one of the worst chapters, I think it's just been the way that Taizai has been going anyway. Um, so I wouldn't say it's one of the worst chapters in terms of expectations. I think it's as bad as uh, the rest have been, but there have been chapters which have been far worse. Anyway, the chapter starts with um, Meliodas and the Demon King fighting at this lake in Salisbury, I believe it is. Um can't remember where I read that. Yeah, yeah so it's at the, the Magic Lake in Salisbury. Cool. Um, Elizabeth's just there watching while Meliodas pretty much absolutely shreks the Demon King. He's using Lost Vein, he's slicing at him, punching him, dodging attacks, slicing at him again. The Demon King is getting absolutely hammered. I'm not sure what more you could expect from the guy. He, is, he has been the most pitiful, and I will say that Again, the most pitiful final villain of any manga I have ever seen in my life. I mean, like, maybe... Actually, wait. <laughs> you walk the second time he came around. I mean, like, when Ichigo's kid is there and he's like, oh, yeah, and he touches, like, the the Yuwak remnant or some shit and he just explodes and dies. I was just like, the fuck? But, um, this definitely um, matches that to an extent. So the Demon King actually pulls out something cool here. Uh, he pulls out a move we've never seen before, Hellgate Blades. Essentially, he just coats, uh, well, he doesn't really coat anything in darkness. He, uh, f he condenses some darkness into a giant um, curved blade, and it looks awesome as shit. So I was like, okay, maybe the Demon King will have some fight in him. He throws some Getsuga Tensho straight towards uh, Meliodas. Meliodas goes and actually uses Lost Vein's ability, which is to split himself into, like, Kage Bunshins, and he uses full counter. Now, this is one of the parts that Griever mentioned and one of the parts that I actually also realized. So, actually, wait, let's not get to that yet. So, first, the Demon King, he's he's about, he's about he's preparing to take the attack. He's about to get wrecked again. But this time, Elizabeth enchants Meliodas' blade with Ark. And, by the way, Elizabeth looks like she has been squatting for days. I mean, like, I, don't, I don't really like squats and the ECGs or, sorry, the EMGs for for glutes this is just for y'all um i don't think i don't think squats are a very good fire of glutes i may be wrong but I, her quads more than anything they are outstanding like she has been squatting for days anyway with meliodas and elizabeth's fusion attack with enchant arc meliodas releases a new move called god shredder um, fusion technique, God Slayer. So I thought, I thought that was pretty cool. It's about time that we've seen a unique fusion attack from both Elizabeth and Meliodas. We haven't seen anything like that before, for for reasons that Grievo has also mentioned in his review. Uh, the main reason being that um, her attacks so or her enchant, which is a, a light kind of goddess, typical style of magic, a light magic, and Meliodas' dark demon magic. They don't. They're kind of opposites. You can't fuse them together. They they would hinder one another um, rather than add to each other and multiply to each other. So that, that's why Meliodas is in more of his human form here. He's not using any demonic based attacks. He he's just wrecking the Demon King with purely base physical abilities right now. Um. So yeah, th there's that. <laughs> Elizabeth. Elizabeth is uh, one of the key things here. Is Elizabeth isn't really doing much again. Um, she's just there kind of watching enchanting attacks I mean like that's one of the main issues we had with this whole blood soaked Ellie thing was the fact that it had never been hinted at before that we knew she was powerful we knew that she she could kick some ass if she wanted to the fact was that just 
in her entire life, there never seemed to have been a moment where she'd wanted to, and apparently she was known for it, and nobody had remembered that or recognized her for it. So, uh, once again, this is uh, in this battle, she's more of an enchantress rather than an actual fighter, considering she just wiped the floor clean with the Demon King last chapter. You know, get involved, let Elizabeth do what she was doing last chapter. I don't give a shit. The Demon King is getting curb stomped anyway. Let them both jump in on the front at least and like tag in and kick the shit out of him instead of her just amping up and buffing Meliodas. Anyway, Meliodas says here, this is the, the part that's key. And by the way, Griever goes into the history of why he doesn't like the enchantment of Meliodas' attacks. I won't breach that here because that's his review. So, yeah. So, Meliodas mentions here the ruler. The Demon King doesn't seem to be able to invoke his magic power of the ruler, which is he's able to invert any and all magical attacks. So I think it was just magical attacks. I can't remember if it was physical as well, but any and all magical attacks are inverted. So if anything is trying to damage him or steal from him or anything like that, it will instead buff him and add to him um, and basically improve him in any way. Whereas if it's the other way around and if you try to give magic to him or give power to him, he will be weakened as a result of it. So that's what the ruler is in a nutshell. And Meliodas says here, you can't use the ruler. Maybe it's because your vessel isn't compatible enough that you can't use it. Uh, so he essentially gives the Demon King a chance here. He's like, get out of Zeldris' body. Go back to the go back to Purgatory and I'll, I'll basically let you live. Now what I don't like here is, first, Zeldris, this, this, is, uh, this feels like a slight on Zeldris to me. And Griever has like another set of reasons why he doesn't like this but my main reason is that Zeldris has shown to be very very capable of most feats you know he's he's only really below Meliodas and obviously like Eskinor and stuff like that but in terms of demons he's he's a really really strong demon a candidate for demon king and all that good stuff I don't this is a slight towards Zeldris that his body can't like hack the sesh once the ruler comes into question it's like nah his his body would be able to hack the sesh, and there's no way. This is something Griever has a uh, brings up a lot, and I totally agree with. There's no way that Zel the Demon King possessed Zeldris's body. Said, yeah, this is this is awesome. I, I'm surprised by how compatible I am with this body. I'm surprised by how, um, I'm surprised by how what's the word I'm looking for? Robust it is, and how my powers have melded and all that stuff. And then only now realized shit you know what the ruler doesn't work if he'd known that then he wouldn't have said all that shit about this is a really good kind of uh combination my my soul my possessing my possessiveness of this body all that good shit but the demon king here can can kind of tell he's like meliodas is stalling the bi vibrations in the air all that shit you know he's he's, get, he's getting all that tingly sensation basically telling him that meliodas is desperate Meliodas continues to lay the hurt on the Demon King, but this time the Demon King's like, your punches are slow, your uh, sword slashes are sluggish and all that shit. Anyway, while Meliodas is still kicking the shit out of the Demon King, he's telepathically sending messages over to Zeldris within the Demon... Well, Zeldris within Zeldris's body, but within the Demon King's psyche. He's saying to himself, don't bend yourself to Father's will, reclaim yourself... And then you have Elizabeth kind of doing the same thing. She's like, she's basically telling us this is the same fight as last time. We have to have a fighter on the outside in the physical realm and a fighter on the inside within the uh, mental realm, essentially. So that's it's the same thing as Ban and Meliodas beforehand. Ban was on the outside, Meliodas was on the inside, and now we have Meliodas on the outside and Zeldris on the inside. Uh, so yeah, Elizabeth is apparently able to communicate with Zeldris telepathically. Apparently, they're all able to telecate, tele, uh, to communicate telepathically. I mean, like, that's just... Uh, they could do it, apparently. Uh, so, she's there saying, yeah, Zeldris, listen to your brother, please. And I'm like, if Zeldris... Zeldris probably doesn't like the idea so much of getting uh, possessed, so, you know, he's, he's bound to be probably awake? I don't know. I, I'm not sure. Like, if he was awake, then surely we would have seen a page where I think that might be Next time we'll find out that yeah he's awake and he'll start fighting back and maybe once like Gelda comes in he'll like through the power of Bonas he'll be like okay shit I can't be possessed I gotta get out of this mess I think that's pretty much what's gonna happen anyway the Demon King's like he's cussing down Meliodas saying are you actually trying to save your little brother Meliodas kicks the shit out of him and this this was the really weird part the Demon King here basically says that. Meliodas should have a power rivaling his own um, and he's not using any of the power which he could 
used to decimate the Demon King right now. He's not using his demon power. He's not using all of his magical abilities and all that stuff. So <laughs> the Demon King is essentially... He, he's, he's saying like Meliod is extremely powerful, but he hasn't man managed to kill me yet. He hasn't managed to completely ruin my life as of yet. What a fool. So he's trash-talking Meliodas for not having killed him yet, whereas Meliodas has just been playing with him. And there's another person watching this fight who, even if things do take a turn for the worse, can step in and wipe the floor with the Demon King. Uh, so I'm not sure what this is doing. Apparently this will be Meliodas' undoing. Um, the next chapter is called Unforgivable Stalemate, so I assume Meliodas will not want to kill the Demon King while the Demon King supposedly continues to get stronger. Uh, because the Demon King's demon mark does seem to expand over his face at the end of this chapter. But it's a really weird flex. That's one of those ones where it's like weird flex, but are you okay? I'm not sure the Demon King is really okay in the head. But I want to end the chapter there. I want to end the review there because it was just a typical fight chapter and a typical Taizai chapter as of late. Not really much substance, not really much consistency with the power scaling and all that stuff. And the Demon King has been turd since pretty much we first saw him he was cool and then after that since he actually started doing shit he's just been he's just been a turd and now it's attempting to polish a turd which really isn't working out so well so let me know what you guys thought of this review let me know what you guys thought of this chapter like comment subscribe all of that good stuff go check out grievous review which is more in depth and i'll see you guys in a bit